What is up, everyone? It's Julian. I hope you enjoyed that sound. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Solomon. As usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available. And yeah, let's get started. So, this is the clip you heard in the intro. We're at 123 BPM. And the first sound I have here is this drone, which sounds like this. This is playing A sharp and F, excuse me there, A sharp and F, and then we have an A sharp up here just doubling up the root. So this is a little bit different than the usual kind of drone that I use in my tracks and sort of like how I would usually use it. Usually I would have it playing like the root note and maybe the third. So in this case, this chord, the proper chord here would be A sharp minor. So it would be A sharp and C sharp. But here I have it playing the root note and the fifth, and then I have a root note an octave up as well. And yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a different sound. Like if I mute these notes and I add the third here instead, you can hear. Just doesn't really quite have the same vibe. So having those that fifth and then the octave up there, I just feel like fits a little bit better for this vibe. I was going for something a little bit more like mysterious and kind of like dark in that sense. So yeah, I feel like the relationship between the A sharp and the F there definitely gets that. So then for the sound, it's made in analog. What I've got here is I've got two saw waves, and those are going into a low pass filter. You can see I don't have any envelope on the filter. It's just set like this. I got the frequency set there, and I've got the resonance. And then after that, I just have a bit of vibrato here. You can see, yeah, I've got it up to 42%. Pretty, pretty slow rate. Just kind of gives it some motion. So it's not just the same sound for the whole time that it's playing. And yeah. So the next thing I have on here is the saturator, which is set like this. I've got a bit of drive, and then I change the color mode, the sinusoid fold, so just gives it a little bit more power. Then after that, I have a bit of reverb. You can see it's set pretty wet, and it's got a pretty long decay time. With drones like this, I try to use reverb almost like to add texture. Like, obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to tell, like, reverb or delay, like the way you can hear it in something more rhythmic. When you just have a long note like this or multiple long notes like this, you would just usually have the reverb for like, yeah, adding a bit of that kind of like spacey texture. Like if I turn it off, it's so cool because we have the saturator, but it's a very dull kind of like saw wavy sound that you just hear a lot. So I feel like adding the reverb adds that cool kind of texture to it. And then I turned off all of these kind of things as well. Just, it kind of like cleans it up. Like some of these can make it sound a little weird. Like this spin here, if I turn that on, you can hear it gets all chorusy, so I just like to turn those off. So then after that, I have this auto pan, which is set like this. I've got it. I've got the phase set to zero, and we're on the saw waveform, and I've inverted it, and then we've got it doing quarter notes. So it's doing like this kind of fake side chain, like if you hear it playing off the kick. Yeah, and the only reason I didn't side chain this and the other melodic things, as you'll see, to the kick is just because the kick. It just didn't quite sound right side chaining things. Sometimes when you side chain things, it can be a little bit weird with different kick samples. So yeah, I just prefer to use this and it makes it a little bit cleaner and a little bit simpler. So then after that, I just have an EQ8 cutting out the low end and then I boosted a bit of high end to kind of bring out that sharpness again. And that's it for the drone. So the next sound I have here is the lead, which sounds like this. So this is two layers. We have this one. And then this one. So the first one is made using operator. They're both made using operator, I believe. Yes. Um, and so what the first one is, is I have a saw wave. I have no FM here. And then I have a sine wave. And the sine wave is an octave up. And then I've messed with the fine tuning a little bit. So it's kind of detuned. You can hear that makes it really stand out. If I just make the sine wave just regular. Doesn't really stand out too much, but when you detune it, you get kind of like a cool sound. Um, so then I have those going through a low pass filter, which has this envelope on it. It's just got a bit of attack, and it's more of like a plucky kind of sound. And yeah, then after that, I have a bit of echo. I've got this set to dotted eighth notes, and you can see I've got a pretty low, dry, wet. Then I have a little bit of reverb for some more space. And then finally, I have another auto pan doing one of those fake side chains that I had on the drone. So then the second lead layer sounds like this. And this one is actually a little bit simpler. So this is just one square wave. And then I have it going into a low pass filter with this sort of envelope on it. 
And then I've actually had this going through the same processing as the first one, so... You can hear they just kind of like complement each other really well. Like if I play either one of them on their own in the track... It doesn't really work super well, but when you put them together... They have that cool kind of like old, more old school techno kind of synth sound like Solomon uses a lot in his music. So the next sound we have here is his bass, which sounds like this. So this is just kind of following the chord progression. Um, pretty simple with the notes, honestly, on this one. And then for the sound, what I've got is I've got just a square wave in operator here. It's going into a low pass filter. With a bit of an envelope on it, kind of doing like... Yeah, like a pluck. And then after that, I have that going into this echo, which I'm not using a whole lot. You can see I've got it set to 16th notes. And then, this is just to give it a bit of texture. Um, the thing is, is that this bass just sounded very flat and dry. Like, it's just very obvious. So I like adding things like echo that, if used right, can add kind of a nice, more like organic texture to it. And what I mean by use the right way is, you can see here, I've got this high pass filter turned up pretty high. Oh, well, pretty high for a song like this. I've got it at 155 hertz. So what that's doing is it's cutting out all the bass from the repeats. When you have a delay, you really don't want to have, I mean, when you have a track like this where there are a lot of things going on, you really don't want to have, like, some super low end being delayed over and over. It's just going to get really messy. Like, if I turn off that filter... You can hear that those low-end cascading delays just aren't really the best. So what this does is it just filters that low-end out of all the delays. And this way, you still get the echo and you still hear it. You just don't feel it so much. And then the other thing there is just having like a very low dry wet. So it's not a whole lot of the delayed signal coming through. And yeah, then after that I have this reverb. You can see I've got the size and the K time turned down a bunch. I don't have that much dry wet either. And that's just kind of doing the same thing. It helps to give it some life and just helps to kind of like, yeah, make it a little bit more interesting of a sound. Here's without it. And then with it. Then after that, I have the saturator, which is really simple. I just gave it a bit of drive. And then you can see I turn on the sinoid fold mode for the color. So same thing as I did with the drone. It just kind of changes it, makes it hit a little bit harder. And then finally, I just have this auto pan doing the sort of fake side chain effect. So then, the next thing that we have here are the drums. And the drums all together sound like this. So, the first drum that I have here is the kick, which sounds like this. And so the way that I made this kick is actually a bit interesting, and it's definitely a really good technique for making this kind of style. And if you want to make those, like, Solomon-style kind of, like, softer but still really punchy kick so the way that i made this essentially was by taking like an 808 kind of kick you can actually have that long like like i said 808 style kind of like sine wavy drum machine kick and what i did was i brought it in here and i first added a volume envelope to it so you can see i just kind of have that set like this so it shortens it a lot if you listen to this one you can hear it's very long and obviously you wouldn't want something like that in this track so yeah i just shortened it with the sustain and the decay then after that, I pitched it down a little bit, but then after that, I added what's called a pitch envelope. If you don't know what a pitch envelope is, basically, it's like a volume envelope, how it starts at one point and goes down to another point. It's the same thing, just on the pitch. And what you can do with this is you can add punch to your sound. So if you listen to this original kick, it's kind of punchy. You know, you can hear the attack at the start of the sound, but if you listen to this... You can hear it's a lot more punchy. And so this is the pitch envelope at work. Basically what I did here is I just kind of turned it up a bit. And then it's all in just how you play with the decay. Like if you do too much, you can hear then it's kind of pitched a little bit too high. And if you do too little, it's just like a clicky kick. So yeah, again, the key is just to kind of get it in the right range. And the right range is going to be different for every kick because every kick is a different length. But yeah, that's how I did that. Um, so that's a really good technique. Like I said, to make these kind of kicks, like I'm pretty sure Solomon does this. I know a lot of other producers do this. And yeah, if you want these kind of like punchy, but still tight and just sort of like workable, I guess you would say 808 kicks, this is the way to do it. So then after that, I just have a bit of saturation. I've just turned up the drive a little bit and then I turn up the bass frequency on the analog clip. This just gives it a little bit more power. 
It kind of helps to bring it through a little bit more. Then the next thing I have here is the clap, which sounds like this. Not really a whole lot to this. When this is more about the style of clap, like I've noticed Solomon uses a lot of these kind of like softer, more like hand clappy kind of samples. So I took one of those and then I'm like going through a small amount of reverb. You can see the decay time is pretty short and then the dry wet is at 13%. So not a whole lot on there. Just kind of helps to bring it to life a little bit. The next thing I have here are the hi-hats slash shakers, which sound like this. Basically, what I got going on here is I have this hi-hat, which is just playing on the upbeats. You can hear how it plays off in the clap. And then I have the shaker. Which is kind of playing off of that. So you can hear, the cool thing with these is they're kind of similar, like, tonally slash sonically. So it kind of just sounds like one loop. And... This is very simple. As you can see, there's like no processing on these. It's kind of just more about sound choice with these. And also it's like about just knowing like subtle details. Like I would not call these drums complicated or complex at all, but I will say there are a lot of like subtle complexities going on there that make it more than just like, you know, like it's not just like this. Like, that would be a little bit boring. So having having these extra things in there. Again, it's just like subtle stuff like that that really makes the whole thing a lot better. So in the last layer of drums that we have here are these two little percussion sounds, which sound like this. These are pretty simple. It's just like this clave. And then this little metal percussion thing. And then those are just kind of playing off of the rest of the drums. So I play it with the kick and the clap. Yeah, really not a whole lot to those. Again, they're just kind of like very subtle little sounds in the background that help to really build up the track and add a lot to it without being too much and without having too many things competing for the same space in the track. So that's pretty much it for this one. I just want to show you guys some techniques. Um, make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments and make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and MIDI and presets and samples and all that kind of stuff from this video in the description, so make sure to check that out. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. Thank you so, so much, everybody. All the support lately has been really amazing. You guys are really, like, just showing me how much all this work that I've been doing means to you guys, and it really means a lot to me. So with that, I will say thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.